And I'm going to now talk to you about ImageLab 3.0 and its powerful data analysis package that comes integrated in the software. So um, let me start by first saying that the nice thing about ImageLab is that it is no longer, unlike Quantity 1, it is not license protected. So anyone can have this on their own computers for, for analyzing their data without the need of, for a USB ha uh, security key. And it runs fully on native Mac uh, uh, computers, so Macintosh computers, as well as PCs. So, so that's a, a really great plus for this software. And uh, for band analysis, it's, uh, it has very powerful new advanced features that I'm going to uh, show you quickly um, so that you can learn very quickly how to use this software to analyze your data. So I just clicked off the startup uh, guide, which is here, the start page, which is the way the software actually opens. So I clicked off this, and now I'm going to open an image file. So file, open. And you can open the image file. So I'm going to open, um, you, and this software is great because it opens either uh, Quantity 1 files, .1SC files, or scan files, which are from ImageLab. The fact that it opens Quantity 1 files means that you're actually able to open files that are run on our Gel Docs, our Chemi Docs, our VersaDocs, and our Theros FX instruments. So essentially, all of our imagers, with the exception of the GS800, will all those files can be opened with this software and analyzed. So a very nice, versatile package that allows you to, to look at your data very easily. So now, let's open a file. We'll open this one, Homo Contest DNA. So here's a file that was taken. It was just a dilution series of DNA. And I've done this uh, before in a previous video, but I want to show you the new, uh, the new features in the software between uh, version 2 and version 3, which is the, the, the newest version of the software. So we have a file that's open. As we can see, it's a dilution series of DNA. So what, we'll, what I can do is I can work my way down these steps, starting from image tools, to be able to analyze an image. So I click on image tools. Here I can flip the image. I can rotate. I can crop. So I can take the crop toolbar, move it, move it across the image to crop out any data that I'm not interested in analyzing. Okay, and and it, you always finish using these tools by right clicking in the image. So I right click, click crop, and then I can crop. Now the newest, the new, the new part of this software in version three that wasn't in version two, which is nice, is that now if I right-click and crop, let's make a smaller crop window just for fun. Is if I right-click, I can now save the crop settings. So I can save that window as a crop setting. And what I can do is I can now load that crop window in any subsequent image that I take. So I can crop all my images to exactly the same size, which is great for doing overlays or looking at uh, multiple images or these kinds of things. All right? So that's really nice. So there we go. So I've cropped my image. I can also uh, rotate the image, and uh, and um, if I if I need to fine tune the rotation, I'm not going to get into that tool. Lanes and bands. So lanes and bands. Now I want to define the lanes. So I have two tabs: lanes tabs and bands tabs. So in the lane tab, again, I'm going to always use the manual tool to be able to show you how to do these things, um, so that you can see all the steps. So there are six lanes in this gel, so six. And I get these lanes that are here. So I want my bands to fit between these green lanes here. So I'm going to stretch the lane to fit across my gel. 
there. So you can see that my bands, especially the larger bands, are a little bit overflowing in the lane. So what I'd like to do, and also my gel's a little bit warped at the bottom here. So this is, I've already resized, so it moves to the all lanes tools, and it's resized the lanes because I've stretched the lane tool. If I go to adjust, I can now adjust and bend the lane somewhat. to fit the contour of my gel. Do you see what I did there? So, it, so, it's, so it's kept this part sort of the same and it's bent down here to fit these lanes. And so now all these bands here are fitting much better if I move the, bend this over a little bit. There we go. And now I've centered these bands. And these are mostly centered. So not bad. We're getting, we're getting somewhere using the all lanes tools. Now I'd like to adjust certain lanes. So I'm going to go to the single lane tool and I'm going to adjust the width of certain lanes. So if I click on a lane, I can actually make the lane a little bit bigger to adjust the width. So I can take the full density, particularly of the top bands. That's not bad and that one's not bad and that one's not bad either. <coughs> so now I'm taking the density of all of the bands. They're all fitting within my lanes. So the next tool that I'm going to use is bands. Now I detect bands. And I can detect for, for, uh, for low or for high uh, sensitivity. Or I can set a custom. So you can see low sets the slider to 25. High for faint bands sets it to 75. So if I start with low and I say detect, I've detected a lot of bands, but I'm missing the fainter ones. So let's try high. So I've detected a lot of other ones, but a lot of artifactual bands as well. So maybe what I'm going to do is set, go for custom and set it to, let's say, between 25 and 75. So let's try, I don't know, 36. So not bad. Let's try 40 maybe. So you know, we've detected a few, a few extra bands here. We've detected some extra bands here, and I'm missing a few. So what I'm going to do now, I'll close this, and maybe what I'll do is I'll adjust. So these settings here, up here, allow us to look at different parts of our image, but this is the one for adjusting brightness and contrast. It's the transform tool, so I can slide over this to darken things up a little bit so I can see the bands particularly in this region of the gel here, a little bit easier. So if I click OK, now I'm going to delete certain bands that I don't, they're not interested in. Okay. And I'm going to add bands where I am interested. Now you can see I wanted the band to appear here, but it went up there. We'll fix that. Same thing here. This one did OK. And then this one, I can't even see a band there. Okay? So this one too, we need to make some certain adjustments with the ones that I've manually added. So, back to lanes. So, so let's go up here to the lane profile tool. And let's look at our lanes. So let's start with this lane here. So we can see the lane. Now let me, let me go back and adjust the contrast again because I can't see much up here. It's very dark because of what I did here. So let's readjust this. Make it a little more light again so we can see things easier. There, click OK. There we go. So now I can see the actual bands here. And we can see, actually, that the software visualizes bands as peaks of density that are exactly the shape of the band, the same sort of width and length, if you will, of the band. So what it's done is it's actually taken this lane, lane one that I clicked on, and it's laid it horizontal. So this band here is band one, this band here is band two, and this band here is band three, and so on and so forth. There's band four. So it sees the bands as peaks that are the width of the band. In other words, the width of the band here going down, and the length of the band with density coming out of the page. So it's almost like a cone of density. 
that it's measuring. And you can see it's done a really good job of cutting the peaks well, so I'm, so I'm not taking background with the peaks, and I'll show you that in a minute. But what I want to do is adjust the uh, width, okay, because sometimes it doesn't do a great job. So here in this case, you can see taking this peak plus all this little tail here. So I'm going to move to where the tail ends, and I get these two arrows. And if I click and drag, I can drag back to the peak. So I'm just looking at the peak. And that then, all the rest of the bends are okay. So if I click on the next lane, I've done the same thing with that, with that peak. And this lane, again, I've done the same thing with that peak. And now I get to a lane where it's, where it's taken all of this. This is this, this peak here, number four. So I'm going to grab it from this side and move it to the little peak there, which is the one that I'm looking at to all the other ones, and it moves it right down again. And then the last lane, everything's looking pretty good. Okay? So, as you can see, so if I keep this lane on, and I now look at background subtraction, so it's down here, the smaller the disk size, so it uses a rolling disk method for background subtraction, and the s bottom line is that the smaller the disk, the, the, the further away, the closer, sorry, to the peaks you get. So if I increase this disk to, let's say, 99, and I click Apply, you can see now I'm taking a lot of background with these peaks. I'm not, no longer cutting the peaks. I'm taking the peak plus all of this background. So this, the data for the density for these peaks would be pretty meaningless unless I can cut the peaks closer to the background. So let's try setting this now to 1. Now look at how close now the background follows the peaks. So I'm cutting just the peaks there. If I set it to, say, 2, get a little bit more here. I'm looking at this part here. And that's pretty good. If I, if I, so that's this last lane. Sorry, this lane here. Okay. Let's look at the last lane here. Not bad, okay, as far as this one goes. Although I'm not happy that it's taken this, this density here, so I'm going to move this here to that one. Look at this lane. Looking very nice. This lane. Very good. This lane and this lane. So now I've qualified the way in which it's actually integrated the area under my peaks. And all that using the lane profile tool. Okay? So once I've done the lanes and selected the bands, as I showed you, then we use the lane profile tool to make sure that it's done a good job of finding the bands and we adjust the background to assure that we follow the contour of the background and cut the peaks. Because this background changes a lot from top to bottom from about 850 all the way down to about three or 400 at the end. Okay. Now we can click on the analysis table. And what we get is the analyzed gel. Where we have the area under those peaks. So this is band one in lane one. So if we look up here, here's lane one. Band number is from top to bottom. So that's band one at this, at this value. In lane two, band one is at this value. And then this value for lane three, that for lane four, lane five, and lane six. We look at the second set of data. So starting here in the second band for lane six, we go from 30 to 64 to 134 to about 300 to about 600 to about 1100, let's say. So it looks like this is with the twofold dilution series. So this is already I'm populating data. So if, if all I wanted to do is, is look at densitometry, this is all I would need. And I could export this table to Excel simply by these tools here. And the tool I'm interested in the most is Copy Analysis Table to Clipboard, which I could just click on. Then I could go to Excel. So I'm just going to share Excel now on my, on my tool here. 
So I'm going to Excel, which is here. I'd right click and I'd paste. And there's my data. So there is my densitometry data for lanes and the bands within lanes. I go back to Image Lab. So I have to reshare that application. I'm sorry, this will take two seconds. So if I go back to Image Lab and I click off my analysis table, I can go to this tool here at the top of these are all sort of my imaging tools. If I click here. I like to show band number, but for all the lanes. And now what I've created is a map of my gel by lane number and by band number within the lane. And then I can export this also as an image. So I can go File, Export for Publication, Current View. I always export the current view. I usually export it as a 300 DPI, but you can go up to 600. And then I click Export. And it asks me, how do I want to save this as a TIFF? No, I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Okay, so I can easily just bring it in. But you can save it as TIFFs or whatever you wish. And I'm going to save it on my desktop. Save. And now I can insert that picture from my desktop. Whoops. Let me go share Excel here. You can see what I'm doing. There we go. There's Excel again. I'm going to insert that picture that I just made from file on the desktop. It's somewhere. There it is. And there is the image. So now, I have image data, so I have my gel with lane numbers and band numbers beside the quantitative data here, all ready to go. So I have lane, lane 1, band 1, lane 1, band 1. There's the density. Lane 2, band 2, and so on and so forth. So lane 2, band 1, and so on. So I have the density data right beside the gel image data. And you know I can do this as I wish. So if I wanted to, if I didn't want to have these bands here, I could go back up here and I could say, "Don't show the bands." So now I'm just showing the lanes. I, I can even say, "Oops, I have to share this again." You're not seeing what I'm doing. There. So back to where I was. I can say. With this tool here, I can say, don't show the bands. So I just see that. Or I can say, don't show the lanes or the lane frame. And now what, now I have a, you know potentially a nicer image, if you'd like, by lane number and then band number. And I can export this to Excel. So whatever I wish. And I have my picture with the data. So what I can do now is, I can move on to the next step. So I'm going to show everything again. I'm going to show all. There. And the next step is molecular weight analysis tools. So I can analyze molecular weight if I wish. And I can use different types of markers. If I don't happen to have BIRAD markers, I can enter new markers into the name of the company. Let's say if it's a protein standard, I click Add, and I add the molecular weights. And I work my way down the list one by one. And I just then I can save. Click OK, and I can save the values. So I'm just going to cancel here. So let's say this is uh, the 100 base pair molecular weight ruler. OK. It's telling me. Select, a st select standard lanes by checking the box below the lanes. OK, so that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. These are my zoom tools which are, that go with imaging. Zoom in and zoom out. And now I can see the box. I couldn't see it before because I was zoomed in. So if I zoom back in, I can't see it. So there's the boxes. And you tell it where the standard lane is. So you click, and then it automatically sizes everything. If I have multiple standard lanes, I can click on them. And it, as you can see, it adjusts for two standard lanes to more fine-tune your standards. 
And then, if I click on analysis table, now I have molecular weights for everything. For all my lengths and all my bands. So that's done. Next step is quantity tools. So I can do relative quantity. So if I want to do the, qu the density of all my bands relative to this one, I can say, okay, select my reference band. There's my reference band. And now if I go to the analysis table, all the densities are relative. So this band was, is 0.75. Band 2 in lane 1 is 0.75 of this. And this one is a quarter of this density. And, and so forth. For all the lanes, it did use that one reference band. I can also do absolute if I wish. So if I know the amount of protein that's loaded in these lanes, I can say, okay, let's select different bands to add to my calibration curve. Okay, so let's select um, let's start with this one and say that that's um, let's say that's 100 nanograms for fun. Let's do this one. Let's say this one's 50. I'll select this one. It's already calculated because it needs 2 to do the calculation, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select 25 for that one because I know this is a two-fold dilution series. Select 12 for this one. I'll select Six, whoops, six for that one, and for that one I'll select three. Okay, so now I've done a full dilution series, okay, with a standard curve. Now, if I go to analysis table, I have the absolute quantity of all the different bands. The ones that are in A are ones that fell outside of the range of densities of my standard curve. So, so in lane 4, it wouldn't record it. And in lane 6, uh, band 3 was not recorded because it's the intensity of this band is lower than this one here. So it's NA. But all the other ones are available based on my standard curve. And I can actually even look at the standard curve up here under standard curve. And I can see the fit of the standard curve that I did. So this standard curve is an R squared of 0.98, which is not bad. 0.98 for that standard curve that I that I just prepared because I knew I knew it was a two-fold dilution series. I can also look at the molecular weight standard curve as well for the for all my molecular weights to look at the data there as well. And this is all printable, exportable data. So now I've populated my analysis table, as you see here. Again, I can copy that to clipboard, and then I can paste this into Excel, so back to Excel. I'll let you share that here so you can see what I'm doing. So here's Excel. I'll repaste that information. And now I have the volumes, the molecular weights, absolute quantity, relative quantity, I have my gel image with lane numbers and band numbers, and I have my data. So everything is in one place, nicely done. And that's as easy as Image Lab works. So if I just reshare Image Lab one last time here, it's as simple as opening the image and running through these tools. The really neat features in, in Image Lab are the cropped feature that I showed you before, along with the file export tool, which allows you now to export for publication. So you can export the entire image or current views under different resolutions, 300, 600, I believe specify. You can go all the way up to 1200 DPI resolution for your image. You can also export the image for analysis, and this allows you to go to TIFF. And you can export for PulseNet, uh, and you can export the band, layman band tables as you wish. Okay, I prefer just doing copying and pasting in the analysis table. I prefer doing it that way. It's just easier, I find, into Excel. 
The other nice feature in this software that's a little bit behind the back, uh, you know, behind the scenes, is the um, is the dynamic resolution feature that comes with this software, which is all automatic, but it keeps the resolution of your bands um, the same as you zoom into the image. So it, so you you don't lose um, uh, resolution as you zoom in. The bands, so the bands still look great as you zoom in to your bands when you're looking at them. Although the raw data hasn't changed, you can still be densitometry and everything. But that allows you to to produce beautiful picture quality images, time and time again when you when you uh, when you export for publication. So I hope that was useful. Um, a very nice set of tools in Image Lab to allow you to do uh, all the, t the type of dentatometry work that you would ever need to do for either gels or Western blots using the Chemidoc XRS, our Versadoc instruments, uh, the 5000 and the 4000. Um, also allows you to work with the Geldoc XR uh, Plus. Uh, uh, the Chemidoc XRS Plus, along with the Geldoc EZ and the Pharos FX. So I hope that you uh, take advantage of using this software. It's an excellent package, and uh, you can download it and use it whenever you wish on both Macintosh and PC computers.